What's up guys, James here again from Totally Exposed. Now on the channel last week, if you saw it, we put out a video all about time lapses. Now me and Neil, we went off to Leamington and Warwick and we shot some wicked time lapses and we took you along and showed you our top tips for how to capture an awesome time lapse. This week, this is the follow up video to that. We're actually gonna take those images put them in the computer and work out how to actually process the images and make an awesome time lapse that you can then start putting in your videos. Sound good? Let's do this. All right then guys, so today we're gonna to be using uh, Lightroom and Final Cut Pro to do this. Um, you can use your own favorite kind of video editing software, and you can also use your own image processing software, whatever you feel most comfortable with, whatever you lose on a daily basis, the concepts are gonna be pretty much the same. So, we're gonna start with importing all of our images into Lightroom. Now, I tend to create just a throwaway new catalog for doing my time lapses, because there are potentially hundreds, if not thousands of images you're gonna be importing, and I just delete them afterwards anyway, once I've got my final video out. So, I'm gonna start by making a brand new catalog that we can use for this process. So I'm in Lightroom, and I'm just gonna say, create a new catalog, um, and I'm just gonna put it on my desktop, and I'm gonna call this uh, time-lapse demo. That's gonna go ahead and create a new catalog for me and I'm gonna go and navigate and find all the files that I want to import into this catalog. So I'm gonna click import, find the files. Okay, so here are all the images that we shot on that day. Um, I'm gonna just go scroll through and find, we're gonna use the example of the one where myself and Neil were sat in the pub, because I thought that would be, that might be quite a good time lapse. So these are the end of all the Warwick Castle ones that we shot. Here's the start of like the, the pub time lapse, and as you can see there's quite a lot of images as per shooting any time lapse really. You end up with, like I say, hundreds, if not sometimes thousands, a couple of thousands we've had before if we've left them going for a fair old time. Right, so I'll kick that off. Time to have a little quick drink or a little break. Wait for those to import and then we'll be ready for the next step. Cool, so we've been and imported all of the, uh, the images. You can see here we've got 886 um, here that we took. Um, let's have a quick look through then, shall we? So the first couple were like test shots when we were just kind of getting the exposure correct. Um, so we think it starts, I don't know, probably about here or so. So these first few we can delete. We'll just remove these quickly. So we're left with like these starting images here. Now this is where you can actually go and uh, kind of develop them as if you were processing a photo. My advice here would be to not overdo things though. Um, you, because you've shot in RAW, you wanna be able to use the tools in Lightroom to be able to pull back any highlights and stuff like that. So use those tools, obviously, but don't go crazy with the, the style of it. The reason I say this is because I'd like to export this out eventually as say like a master file, a ProRes, that I may want to use in a, a whole bunch of different videos going forward. And I'll probably want to match the style of the video when I import this time-lapse footage. And if it's really heavily stylized to something I thought looked really cool perhaps like a year ago, um, your options to change that later are probably a little bit more limited. I'm going to pick a good starting image. I'm going to use this one here as a good starting base. And I'm going to go over to the develop tab. And this is where you get to play around and put your own touch on it. I'm going to just do some adjustments to this image just to get it looking how I think I'd like it. Okay, let's just go through those quickly, shall we? Okay, so I've reached an image I think I'm pretty happy with here. Um, if I look at the before and the after. So I haven't gone crazy with it. I've just put one of my own presets on um, as a starting point and kind of gone from there. I'm pretty happy with the colors of that. I think it looks pretty cool. 
Right, so now what I need to do obviously is sync these settings across all of these images because as you can see, all the others haven't got those styles applied. So I select the one that I've got all my changes applied to. I'll press uh, Command and A to select all the images and I will press sync. And this will ask you what settings is it that you'd like to sync. I've got all of them checked, that sounds good to me. And I'll press synchronize. So I'm just going to sit and let this chug through. That's going to apply my develop settings across all of these images, ready for the next step. Okay, cool. Those uh, those settings have synced across all the images. So now if we have a look at like this next one, you'll see the same styles have been applied. Perfect. Ready for the next step. What we need to do now is obviously export all of these images out. So I'm just going to make a new folder on my desktop and I'm going to call it um, time lapse export all of these images. Export them out. Um, and the settings I'll use are pretty similar for most of my exports. I'm just going to change where they go. So I'll say time lapse export. And everything else can stay as is. Render those out. Now this is this is going to take a, a little while, obviously. So you might want to uh, have another little drink or another little refreshment. You need a lot of coffee, I think, for this process. But here we go. Right, we are done. That did take a while. Um, depending on the speed of your computer, your mileage may vary. I'm running a MacBook Pro here. That took a good half hour or so to export those images. So kind of boring, kind of long. However, what we've now left with is in this folder, 882 images, uh, all rendered out, ready to go. Now we're now gonna move on to the next step. In my instance here, I'm gonna be using, as I said earlier on, Final Cut Pro. However, if you use Premiere Pro or some other um, editing software, the process is gonna be pretty much exactly the same. So I'm jumping over here to Final Cut Pro and I'm just gonna make a brand new library. Um, so let's just quickly do that. New library and I'll put it on the desktop again. I'll just call it Time Lapse. and into this library I'm going to import all those images that we just rendered out. So they are on my desktop and I'm going to say leave them in place, I don't want to copy them over, just bring them all in and put them in that event. So our images are now imported in. Um, now you may think at this point in time I'll make a 4K timeline and I can start moving all these images in. I tend to not do that, I tend to make a timeline the actual native size of these exported images that you just exported out from Lightroom. Um, and then I will export a much larger resolution ProRes master file that I can then use later on to import into a 4K timeline for my actual project that I'm working on. Um, and that much larger file will allow me to do any kind of pans and zooms within the footage if I wanted to, or I could just shrink it down, whatever, whatever floats my boat when I get to it. But it's nice to give yourself the options for later. So looking at this image here, we exported them out at 6720 by 4480. So if I right click and I'll say a new project, um, I'll just call this whatever, and I'm gonna make a custom resolution of 6720 by 4480. And I'm gonna assume a frame rate of 25 frames per second. Apple Pro is 422 for my uh, rendering and uh, cool. So that's made my uh, my timeline. And so I've got to put all these clips in. Now the way that I would do this in Final Cut Pro, select the top one, go away to the bottom, select all of them. And if you press the shortcut E, that will actually just get every single one of those and whap them all in the timeline for you. So let's do that. In they go. Uh, if I now press Shift and Z, that kind of zooms the timeline out to fill uh, the whole thing. And you'll see this now is two and a half hours long. The reason for that is every single one of those images that we just uh, put in the timeline has assumed the default time of, I, th I believe it's 10 seconds, which uh, is not what we want. What we actually want it to be is one frame. Um, so let's select all of the clips in the timeline by pressing Command and A. 
If you press Ctrl and D, what that allows you to do is set the duration of each one of these items in the timeline. So if I just press one, you'll see it changes in the middle there to one frame, the purple bit, and I press enter. That will now shrink that right down. And if we press Shift and Z again. Okay, so this is now 35 seconds long, much more appropriate length. Um, as we scrub through, we can see the time lapse happening. Now this is the file then that I would now export out as a, as a ProRes file, um, a master file that I could then keep and I could use it in any future videos that I wanted to. So let's go up and I'll say um, export this out as a master file. Uh, my settings, I don't want to compress it, I'll keep it as Apple ProRes 422 and I'll just churn it out on the desktop. Um, ProRes master. So we'll let that render out. And then once that's done, we have, like I say, a master file that we can use in all of our other projects. We'll have a look what it looks like when we drag that into a 4K timeline and we can kind of work with it and zoom it in and out and do whatever we wanna do. All right, guys, so we are done. Finally exported out our, uh, our master file. Let's have a look. Our first um, our first little look at the file. Let's minimize this down a little bit. As you can see, it's in a three by two sort of aspect ratio at the moment because like I say, we exported it out at the main resolution of the images themselves. You'll see that we were using, I was using quite a wide angle lens and we were using an ND filter, but the ND filter that we had was the wrong size. We were using a stepper ring and you can unfortunately just kind of see that in the corners of the, the image. But that's okay because when we actually put this in a proper 4K timeline, you won't see those. They will punch in a bit and they'll be gone. So let's actually put it into a timeline and show you how you use it. So that now I would keep, I would file that away in my kind of resources archive. Uh, so if I ever wanted to use that again in a future video, that's my master file that I can go drag into my project, ready to use, awesome. To just try this out, I'm gonna make a new event. I'll call it test, for example. Um, I will import in that file that's on our desktop. Let me just go back up to the desktop. There it is, uh, I'll leave it in place for now. And I'll make a, a new project and I'll call this test. Uh, but I'll leave this as a 4K timeline. Here we go. Plop that in. And you'll see it just sits in the middle. If I just come and um, say that I'd like it to be a fill, uh, you can still see a little bit of the, the vignetting, or well, not vignetting, but the edge of the, the, uh, the filter rings. But that's okay. We can now zoom in potentially over the whole course of the clip. So I could come up here to the scale. And I could say, yeah, okay, start it at 100%. Maybe I'll add a little uh, keyframe there. And then I'll come through and I'll maybe kind of go to the end and I'll add another keyframe there. And I'll say, zoom it in about that much, maybe. So that'll be a gradual zoom over the whole course of the clip. I kind of like doing that, or you can do like a pan and stuff. So you've got a little bit of zoom to work with. If you were in the 1080p timeline, you've got even more, so you could really kind of punch in on different parts. Anyway, guys, that's it. So that's how you actually take your hundreds of photos that you managed to get from your time lapses, stick them in Lightroom or whatever it is that you fancy using, export them out, put them in Final Cut Pro, render it out. You got yourself a banging timeline to stick in your videos for YouTube or whatever it is you're doing them for. Guys, if that video was helpful, please help us out. Give us a little like down below. Consider subscribing if you uh, wanna see some more content similar to this. And uh, well, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.